You see, that's the thing about artists. They're always so fashionable, even in their appearances. Um, so good morning to you, Greg. How are you today? I'm OK. I'm OK. Thank you. Good. What, I just what, managed what to cool. send all the students out. So uh -huh. if any student comes to collect something from that cupboard, I told them not to disturb us. So hopefully it will be OK. Absolutely. Well, look, just just before we start, can I just say uh, congratulations again on the art show from last week? Uh, Thank what you. you and your students and your staff pulled together from the last year was uh, was really inspiring and wonderful to see. So thank you for that. Um, you. Look, uh, without further ado, I'm just going to introduce you and then I will jump in at the end. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you uh, for what is our last of the series uh, as it is today. Uh, and of course, this is always going to fall to Greg to finish this off because he does it so well and so nicely. Uh, and Greg is going to be doing a, an art masterclass for us today, but uh, focusing in on the UAL provision and what MPW can really offer within that. Um, as always, please mute yourselves during the call, but if you do have any questions, join us uh, as we go. Either pop them in the chat function or unmute and ask as we go along. Otherwise, I'll share this one at the end. But Greg, if I hand over to you now for the sake of time and I'll pick up later on. Yes. James, how, how, how long do we have approximately? Uh, well, we, we're going all the way around to the 11 o'clock hour, um, but if okay. you finish early, then we'll do questions. Otherwise, we'll fill questions as we okay. go, but uh, the, call, the call will drop at 11 o'clock. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, um, hello everyone. My name is Greg Rano, and as James said, uh, I will try to... Let me share the screen one second. So, I... Can you see, you should see the screen now. OK. So can you all see the share screen now? Uh, we can, yes. OK, yes, yes. excellent. Thank you. So basically what, what I would try to do today is just introduce you just uh, quickly, like five minutes to the department, and then um, go through some important information uh, especially for um, a lot of, I, I try to combine some and answer some questions that some agencies they asked uh, the last years. Um, and uh, I prepare some slides uh, to show you um, uh, how to prepare some portfolios and what we're looking for, especially for the foundation uh, course. Um, and then uh, if you have any questions, please uh, stop me or in the end you can um, you can ask. So, um, that's too many images with me. So as you as you can see, uh, the department is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, last year and this year, we have twelve tutors plus an art technician, and that's because we're offering five um, different subjects: photography, graphic design, three D design, which is the um, the ceramics, the old ceramics course, textiles, and art and design. So. Um, the reason that we do recruitment is to advise students, of course, uh, which course is better for them. And um, I will show you towards the end of the, um, the slideshow the results from last year. I usually show off there because we got 100% A start to B. And one of the reasons is not because of the two doors and the, you know, the, the, the quality of the teaching is also the, during the recruitment, we advise students based on their portfolios what uh, subject, which subject they can do better. For example, if there's a student that wants to do art and design, but he or she is not that good in drawing, because academic drawing is really, really important, is one of the assessment objectives for art and design, then we advise um, those students either to do maybe photography or 3D design, because 3D design is all about building and making things with clay, plaster, wood, etc. So that academic drawing is not as important there. So usually students, they listen and they accept this offer and they, they're doing well. Some of them, unfortunately, they don't, but then they have to change in the middle of the year, which is not the best, actually. So um, as you all know, and I kept it quiet in the beginning. We started offering this year the UL Foundation. It's accredited by UAL, the Art and Design Foundation. And we already have seven tutors there, and we're offering 15 hours per week. Um, we have Michael Milloy, he's a, he's a teacher, he's a tutor in UAL itself. He's teaching in Central St. Martin's uh, jewelry. 
and fashion few hours this year. So we have the honor to have um, him with us. So he's teaching four hours out of the 15 of those students. Um, it's more like our foundation course is um, is a little bit is is more like a holistic one. So we have seven tutors, seven different uh, pathways, and uh, they they do a little bit of they they do a little bit of all those different things. So they do a little bit of photography, three uh, D design, jewelry, uh, drawing, painting, fashion, textiles, and then they decide in the half of the year what they want to specialize. But we can talk about that um, in more details later. This this uh, work that you see here is from the current um, students from the portfolios. I have some more later on to show you. Um, art and design. We are offering art and design for A level and GCSE. We have three tutors plus the two specialists in 3D design. Uh, they have five hours in the first year and six hours in the second year. And it's all about sketchbook and research. Of course, don't forget that we are in the middle of the South Kensington. There we have Sachin Gallery next door. We have VNA Natural History Museum. All these galleries around here. So the students are really privileged. We take them to some trips. They go by themselves as well. And of course, art and design is a subject that um, is suitable for students that they can study any art-related subject, architecture, etc. So these are. Um, students work from the past. You can see that those are uh, this is an art student here on the right hand side and all oh, and these two here. But because we have three, we have three D specialists helping them as well. They decided the final pieces to make them more three D, which is even better actually than just flat drawing and painting. Um, so these are architecture students are three different students that they done architecture and they're doing architecture at the moment. And they, they, of course, their final pieces were more 3D. Textiles, another popular subject, is for students that they want to follow fashion and textiles in university. We're offering this subject for um, A level and GCC, and we have two tutors. This is textiles work from the past. The third subject is 3D design, ceramics. Again, we stop calling it ceramics because because also the examples that we're using, they call it 3D design, but I think it's more suitable because at, uh, some students are put off when they hear ceramics. They don't do only clay. Um, these students, for example, here, they can do ceramics by using this balsa wood in the middle. So 3D design, sorry. So it's not just clay. They can use any 3D material, basically. And we're offering this for A level and GCC. This work, for example, here is a student that is doing is a third year in um, in Central St. Martin's doing jewelry now. And you can see this is a sponge. They just paint it, just green color, and then they put this, they pin those um, pins on that, the golden ones, and then they put resin, so it went hard. So those you can see they could be in jewelry, they could be earrings or anything like that. That's kind of 3D design, although it's not clay. Um, those are some successful pieces as well. The middle one here is a piece that um, I think I have a picture later on about that. This is Nikan's work. Nikan is studying architecture now, and uh, he's from Iran. And this piece was exhibited in Sachin Gallery three years ago, actually, two, three years ago. Uh, for two weeks, it was, it was an art competition in Sachin Gallery. And um, this was a winner piece, and he's, he uh, displayed that um, for two weeks in Sachin Gallery. That was quite an honor for the student and us as well. The fourth subject is graphic communication. Again, it's for students that they want to go into web design, advertising, etc. We only offer this for graphic communication at the moment, and we have two tutors for that. Now, students that they, they, they do graphics, they don't need too much experience, to be honest, in the past. And because in the first month when they come in, we just literally we sit down with them and train them and show them how to do Photoshop, how to use the cameras and all the stuff. So as soon as they have the passion and the talent, they can do well, even without experience. The reason I say that is because most of the students that don't have graphics and GCSE experience, but that's uh, not uh, the end of the world. That's that's fine. And of course, the last subject is photography. We are offering that for A level and GCSE. We have three specialists teaching that. It's similar to graphic communication. We can accept students 
that they have the passion to do well in photography. And um, even if they don't, if they even if they haven't done it as GCSE, but please remember and remind um, students as well that photography is not as easy as it sounds. It's not just clicking button or taking some selfies and put on Instagram. I wish it was like that. It's more than that. It's, there's a lot of research there, similar to the other A-level uh, subjects uh, about designers, directors, photographers, etc. And of course, you need to talk about your work. Why you change this photograph, for example, and you change the colors. Why you done that? Why you did this? It's not just taking some photos and, di and display them. Yeah. Even if you don't have a background in Photoshop or how to use cameras or editing or the darkroom, again, in the first month, you learn all these things. And um, so this is from photography um, students work from the past. We also offering that uh, we started four years ago. I think we offer the element portfolio preparation course. This course, we the reason we created that it was because a lot of students that were coming from um, from China mostly, and they, they they were so dedicated and they were telling us that I want to do MBA in um, in fashion or I want to go to UL, Central St. Martin, etc. So those students they didn't want to do three A levels because the BA back then and uh, the foundation, of course, all you needed is one or two levels. So we agree with John, um, the previous principal, and we said uh, if they don't need three levels to study um, BA, the most of the BA courses in uh, UL actually, then why they should spend so much time on the third A level that is not needed? So the most important thing, as you know, is the portfolio. So instead of just spending the third uh, a level to do another subject like math, English, whatever, if especially if they don't need it, they can spend this time to do portfolio. So what they ended up doing is like they're doing two A levels, let's say textiles and art, like these students here. And then the third A level, they, they swap and they change it into portfolio. So they have five hours per week dedicated to their portfolio. And then of course, if you want to study something like a fashion, in Central St. Martins, your portfolio has to be outstanding. So you need to allow enough time for that or other competitive uh, university uh, courses. So these are work from um, the portfolio courses that we do. Live drawing, of course, every Tuesday after school we have live drawing. So it's open for any student to develop their skills in drawing, especially. Sometimes we do more abstract ones, sometimes more realistic. Um, lectures and workshops, obviously, really, really important. We had a lot of um, uh, professionals um, coming at school every year to talk to our students, inspire them, and answer any tricky questions about the industry out there. Uh, we have a lot from UAL coming here, especially the last two years that we worked together. Uh, but we had really famous one like Mark Merson, photographer. In fact, his work, his um, installations and projections, actually, they were projected in the Buckingham Palace during the Jubilee anniversary of the Queen. So it was this water, like um, watery liquid um, uh, drops coming down from uh, projected on Buckingham Palace. That was Mark Mauson. We, we had the honor to come here um, two years ago and talk to our students, and he was really, really uh, inspiring, actually. Um, Annual art exhibitions every year we do that. Actually, no, except the except the um, the COVID. Obviously, that was the only two years that we haven't done it. So it's really really successful. Uh, it's, it's it's an opportunity for us to show off our students' work and the hard work they've done. Uh, and it's open for anyone actually to come in. We have like we turn it into a proper gallery, and we have drinks and food. So you're more than welcome as well next year. If you would like to attend and see A level GCC and foundation um, students work. Um, so awards, of course, I had to include that. I'm not going to read this, but since 2016, we we enter students um, to different awards, especially the prestigious Sachin Gallery Award. And every year we have at least one winner in 2016, and their work 
I was so jealous, to be honest, because they, they had the chance, my students, to display their work in such a gallery. That probably would never happen with me, but uh, the students done really well. So 2016, we had the winner, 2017. And um, also we have um, national school art competitions that they won first prizes. Some of these students work in 3D, photography, art, and um, 2018, again, all the students for different categories. And uh, this is Nikon uh, that I uh, told you in 2019, he displayed his work, the history in the work in such a gallery. And um, so some of you, uh, sometimes you email me, what, what's the percentage of the results last year? What's this year? Obviously, I can't talk about this year because it, uh, we're waiting the examiners to come in in two weeks time and moderate our students work for this year a level in gcc but uh, i can talk about last year so you can see that um, last year we got 70 percent of our students got a star to a which is quite impressive i would say and 100 percent a star to b all our a level students and we had 110 in the department uh, overall in all the five art subjects we got 100 percent a star to b we didn't have any c's hopefully the same will happen this year i will let you know next year and then gcs is 93 percent they got a star to a and we got two c's actually out of all and 93 were all a star to a so again why we done that because we have small groups five six maximum a students and we have a lot of specialists and we have this open policy that students can come in and work anytime they want as soon as of course there is a teacher in the classroom which is always someone here so they are they're free to sit in the corner continue their work they can ask us anything if they want so we like that and that's one of the reasons that um, uh, we got these results and um, you can see that since 2015 it was 12 percent and it went up until we have last year 70. So hopefully we keep going higher. Um, I don't know if you want any to ask anything about results. This is a university offers. Last year, 19 students apply for art um, uh, colleges and universities. Uh, 13 got BA offers, which is quite difficult because usually from A levels, they go to foundation. But 13 of our students, because their portfolios were really, really good, we helped with the portfolios. They got straight from BA, sorry, from A levels to BA courses, and six of them, they went for um, foundation. So 11 out of 19 students, they were international, and um, and of course eight students out of the 19, they went to UAL. Obviously, it's the most popular one. Um, and you can see that it's the same every year. The percentage, more or less, is quite the same. Um, I have three, two slides actually um, about um, some tips for the portfolio because again, some of you you asking me about that. So, unfortunately, I, and it's a good opportunity to explain to all of you now. We can't, we can't just advise and give you long feedback about portfolios when when I first um, see them online, because again, that takes time, but it's not that. It's because some students, they get this feedback and they just go and apply in other colleges and universities, etc. Also, these lessons, we have them here for registered students. So it's not fair to, to do this masterclass in detail uh, to students that they're not even registered or they're not even coming here. But some tips that um, I have uh, here, is quality over quantity. Some 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 agencies, some students they send me 100 pages. That's not what we need. We need 20 pages, let's say, something like that, but really good work. Work that will show the skills, the talent, the progress, the preparation, and the thought and the ideas behind that. It has to be, of course, original, unique, and personal. And, uh, we don't want to see copies from other artists or designers online or Pinterest. We don't want that. It's all about showing this passion. And um, some final pieces, but we need the process before that as well. We need sketchbook pages, not just the final pieces. 
and because we need to see experimentation, materials, techniques, etc. I wouldn't be happy to see just 20 pages only pencil drawing because you show me only one aspect of yours, but foundation especially is experimenting with different materials. You need to experiment with painting, drawing in different media, and even 3D. Um, what you need to avoid, please, please remember that, is don't don't try to impress like, oh, I'm showing only final pieces. And don't show copies, of course, as I said before. If you're going to take photographs like this one here of your 3D piece, make sure it's a good quality uh, because sometimes they're really, really bad and it, uh, photos and it does is not favor any uh, students on that or portfolios. Uh, of course, don't show someone else's work. It's all about your work that we need to see. I don't mind to see some inspiration, but mainly it's your work I want to see, not Leonardo da Vinci's, even if it's your inspiration. Um, try to show a lot of work, but don't show everything. Select in a way and um, don't show overcrowded pages. Don't put 100 pictures in one page. That's too much. So these are some portfolios for, from our uh, foundation students as well. And um, because again, I think one picture, one image is 1000 words. So this is exactly what it's about. This is the final outcome. And this is the final outcome on the actual student. She's wearing it, but you can see that she started with a design process, then the colors that she's going to use on this, and then she actually made small samples. This is, uh, this is 10 centimeters as big as a mobile kind of sample there. You can see that each one of them. So you can see that she practiced the colors and then the knitting process, and then she made that. So she showed that to the university, how you started the idea and how you develop it into the final piece. That's exactly what we need to see as well. This is textiles portfolio, the idea of Bing Bang, uh, Big Bang there, and then you can see how she went into this process and how the samples that she made again inspired by the, her ideas architecture portfolio before you build this this is 3d maguettes that the student made but before you build this you just try to design it experiment again with what colors am i going to use for example red and blue or yellow and blue etc and then the actual final uh, piece um, there or this student here for example She's uh, sorry, he struggled to find the actual design, which and how complicated that would be. But then you can see towards the end, he found this idea the same here. Simple, sometimes it's, it's, it's simple things, but really effective. For example, here you can see that there is two blue lines like um, stairs on that building. And then look at the different ways to present them. And of course, in the end, he decided to go with a cross like an X to make it there. And of course, little designs here. When I said about the presentation, again, leave some space. So separate that. This is a design process. This is the colors and this is the actual final piece. I, I, as you understand, if you send me a lot of students, actually, they send me this photograph, the final outcome. That's not enough. That's not enough at all. In fact, I don't even want to see that. I'm really happy to see this process because sometimes maybe you don't have time to build the actual thing. Maybe you don't have the, the money to buy these materials. It doesn't matter. It's like architects. Sometimes you design it and then customers say, OK, let's build it now. So even if you don't build it, even if you don't show the final outcome, it's not the end of the world. As soon as you have the process and the idea is showing there and the experimentation. So that's really, really important. Graphic communication portfolio again it's all about creating posters as you can see but you can see the process for example this is the actual poster for a supposed to be for a um, gallery space but you can see that she went out there she took her own photos this is her in the shopping center and then she designed it how and what colors she will make it there and then she added the, the writing different ideas there and then she created the poster the same here. So it's all about showing the progress. 3D design ceramics um, portfolio. Again, the process and the final outcome. As I said before, make sure the photos are really, really clear 
and good photographs to show your um, final piece. Fine art is all about drawing, fine art portfolio. Again, you can see the student took her own photos and her friends, and then she this is her in different positions there, posing, and then all this together for the sketchbook page. Another final portfolio. And preparation. This is design, 3D design portfolio. Again, this is a crocodile that a student done out of um, wire, metal wire, and you can see he even put it on the tree outside the college to show the scale and show it in a natural environment because obviously it looks much better here than just on the paper, on a black paper. Animation is quite popular course actually. Uh, a lot of students say they, they lately, and I don't blame them, they apply for BA animation because I think it's a future as well. It's all about games, art, animation, but but an advice for that, we don't accept students that they're not good in drawing or animation. Animation, you have to be outstanding. You have to be exceptional uh, to apply for that. And your portfolio has to show that. And of course, not only you need to do, you need to be good in drawing, like sketching by hand, you need to be good in Procreate and Photoshop to create this digital art, um, which obviously this is from foundation as well. Now, this is again the process of, uh, of an animation and games art um, um, project and portfolio. You can see that they just design it by hand first, and then they created this with Procreate. These are the colors or even the details of the jewelry with some little annotations there, the colors they're going to use. And then this is the actual final piece, which is um, a digital piece. This student, she's uh, she's uh, she's going to do animation. This is a foundation. It's our first one of the first year animation. Uh, sorry, foundation student that we have, and she's going to UAL for animation and games art. So this is another page of hers. This is the inspiration to have an idea what she's inspired from, and then this is her designs. Some are really not detailed. Some are more detailed. And then she moves on again with the colors. She even named the hero. His name is Obsidian. So even the tattoos on his back. And then this is a more detailed one. And of course, that's the actual one. This is made out of Photoshop and Procreate. Everyone is using that nowadays. And uh, but she's using it really, really well. Um, this is another hero that um, she created. So process, different positions, etc. And um, that's the one before final piece. That's all done by digital, but really detailed. You can see that there's a lot of layers in here on the background to create that. And everyone thinks that oh, digital art, digital art is easy, it's a computer. No, you, you control that and you, you create all these layers on the background the forehead, the four on the on the on the foreground, etc. And um, I think that's that's all for the presentation. Let me go back to the okay. Um, that was all. I don't know if you want me to go back to the presentation, if you have any questions about specific slides or general questions about something or you want any clarification. I hope I didn't miss anything. I hope if if I did, please let me know or ask. Super, thanks Greg. James isn't in the room at the moment, so I'm just going to, to temporarily take over for him. Yes. Um, so, so that was really helpful. For, for those of you watching, uh, if you do have any questions, then you're very welcome to put them in the chat box or to unmute yourself. Uh, I'm going to kickstart with a question of my own, actually, which is we talk a lot about UAL. Uh, many of our applicants, many of our students talk about UAL, uh, but of course UAL is not the only very strong art college within the UK. Um, so I think it would be really helpful, Greg, if you could tell us a little bit about 
other art colleges and other courses that uh, students can really aspire to, uh, whether they're taking A-levels or foundation diploma or any of the courses with us. OK, that's really, really helpful, actually, because I, I, I sometimes to, I sometimes do this mistake and keep saying UL, UL. Is, that's one of the reasons because we name it UL Foundation Art Course. That's why. And we have really, really good relationship with them. But you're right. And um, and in fact, we advise all our students in the first cohort, the first year that we do to apply to other colleges as well. And the reason is because not everyone can go to UL because the whole world wants to go there. And especially, and it's a good opportunity because you ask this question now, it's... Um, when I when I had a meeting like a few weeks ago with uh, Sarah Lebrecht, she and because we work together now, they gave me the numbers. I don't know if I think I told you that earlier, but they gave me the numbers of this year, for example, one of the courses. So 1,900 candidates all around the world for 50 places for fashion menswear. 50. 50 menswear, 50 womenswear. Each course, 1,900. That's, that's, that's too much. So... Obviously, we advise the students to apply there, one of the UCAS um, options, because they have five BA options there, but they shouldn't only apply to UL because, you know, I'm not saying they're not good, then our students are not good or anyone, but it's 50 around the world. So it's quite tricky. So universities like, for example, if you apply for architecture, AA is a good one, um, Barlett in UL, um, Bath is a good one, it's in Edinburgh again. So there are so many other universities you can apply. Kingston as well. For fashion, again, everyone thinks in Central St. Martins, but I, I repeat, it's only 50. In fact, just because you asked this, uh, from, from this year, UAL, they rejected students with A-levels. They don't. I know that because we had the best student we've ever had, and she got three A-stars. Lottie, I don't know if anyone attended the art show um, last week. Lo we have an art um, uh, an art um, award, and Lottie Cheney got that this year because she got textiles, art, and photography. She done three A-levels this year with us, and she got three A-stars. So, exceptional student, but she was rejected from Central St. Martins because they simply said to her, "You, ca we can't accept any A-levels, even if you get three A-stars. So not all the courses, but the fashion related courses in Central St. Martins, they don't they, they don't consider any A-levels. So they want foundation. So that's really important to remember that if you have any students that they want to do A-levels and uh, they want to go to fashion Central St. Martins, they will not get a place. They have to do foundation first. And of course, the reason they've done that is about it's all about money. It's business. They want them to go to foundation and then to go for either here or there, etc. But but there's also the LCF, which is the London College of Fashion e at UAL, which they accept you with, with A-levels. That's my point. So you should apply to all the five different colleges in UAL because the majority, they accept you. They're not as, as competitive as Central St. Martins, and they accept you at the same course, in a way, with the A-levels. In the end, they're all UAL. So, And if you accept it in Central St. Martins, maybe you go there. But it's not just that. Um, unfortunately, I can I can say for the fact that I just said LCF, for example, now. This year and in the past, they accept you with A levels. But next year, maybe they will change that. And unfortunately, they can change in the middle of the year. They, and they can do that based on the competition and all the stuff. So that's why I strongly advise everyone to go online on UAL. It's really simple to do that. You go on UAL, you just just research on the course you want, either it's BA or foundation. And if you go down, if you scroll down, it says entry requirements. So you will be surprised because if you check in September, the entry requirements, sometimes they change until Christmas. That always happens. So don't rely on my what I say or anyone. Just go there and check before you apply. That's uh, that's the best. But uh, for fashion, especially Central St. Martin's jewelry, um, fashion, design, uh, men's wear, women's wear, they're all foundation for now. Fantastic. Um, Ravensbourne is another one that uh, all the students that they go there for fashion and textiles are coming back and they're really happy. It's a smaller community and they're, they're quite happy. You'd be surprised because a lot of students are coming back from UAL, Central St. Martins, and they're not really happy. There, is, there are too many. It's just a number. 
I know it sounds a little bit shocking because it's Central St. Martins, but it's the truth. It's not for everyone. It's so competitive that some people, they can't handle that because in the end, it's art. You should enjoy that as well. And that's not happening most of the time there. Uh, competitive courses, they have competitive students, students that they want to do well. And uh, unfortunately, because, you know, it's like that, the teachers as well, they give attention to the ones that they will do even better. So it's not for everyone, I would say, Central St. Martins. Good, good. Uh, are good. there any, I've seen some questions there. but Yeah, we've, we've got some further ones in the chat box. We've got a question from May uh, asking for students in MPW, have they had good university offers for illustration courses in previous years? Yes, we have uh, LCC. It's a good one that a lot of students, the London College of Communication, they they have that. What we do in um, usually in October, before half term or after half term, we bring um, uh, usually Sarah Lebrecht. She's really good because she's working with international students and recruitment, so she knows all about that. So we bring we bring her in, and uh, any question like those, for example, they advise and they give them some options. Um, some students, when they show their work as well, they say to them, you know what, I think, I know you want to go for animation, but your work is more jewelry design, so why don't you go there? So they advise them in this sense as well. But we do that as well. We usually in the beginning of um, the year. Um, so yeah, illustration there. Kingston is another one that is, is getting bigger and stronger and stronger in illustration. In fact, um, there is a course that, um, that was two years ago, actually. A student was rejected from Kingston with the same portfolio, and he was accepted in two courses in UAL. So they get him. MPW for each of the different subjects. Are you talking about? Oh, can you hear me? Well, we, we lost you for a moment, I think, Greg, but we've got you back oh, now. But I, I can't see. Oh, can you can you hear me now? We can hear you clearly now. Yes. Okay. Um, Chris asked, uh, can you elaborate on what you expect of art applicants to MPW for each of the different subjects? Are you talking about A levels or or foundation? You took about yeah. A level. Hi, great. It was it was just just to sort of talk about um, the entry requirements because obviously we've got a couple of different art subjects and the expectations for each are a little bit different. So I don't know if you could explain. Um, you mentioned about obviously drawing skill is important for a couple of them. Okay, uh, we talk about A level yeah. at the moment. Yeah, about A level. So, so different for the yeah, so the, the A level art art subjects that are offered. Um, but then oh. also you know maybe then the differences in terms of what we expect for the diploma as well. Well, for the foundation. Yeah. Basically, they can show, they're free to show anything they like because that's the same in any university, basically. But as soon as they show a lot of different skills, techniques, processes, development, could be anything. As I said before, I don't want to see amazing drawings only because that's one thing. And if you can't do anything else, then you will suffer and you're not going to pass the foundation. So, and that's, I guess, I guess that's why those students, they apply for foundation, either here or any other college. It's for students that they're not sure and they're not specialized on something. But also, I don't want to see a portfolio that is, is about, um, it's only jewelry made. Because this student, especially if it's good, then I would strongly advise them to apply for jewelry design BA. So why they should come and do foundation anyway, if they want to do jewelry. So that's 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 why, and that's what we do with fun, with the, our A level students. If someone wants to go from being jewelry, then the portfolio will be specific jewelry. Or those that they want to do architecture, they're more specific architecture based portfolios. But uh, when it comes to A levels, again, I don't know if I should say that <laughs> because it's not it's not benefiting me. But a lot of agencies now, a lot of people, they start sending me portfolios for A level now. No offense, there's so many, so I can't really respond and give feedback for everyone. I just say yes or no, but um, please keep doing that because it helps us in which sense. If I see someone that um, is uh, is really good in uh, in architecture or potential there, then I advise what subjects they can get before the uh, the application. So as as you said, Chris, if I see a portfolio for an art A level. 
student and I see potential in ceramics or 3D design, or if I see a lot of weaknesses in drawing, maybe we can advise before it's too late to go for graphic communication or 3D design or photography, etc. So uh, I, we don't have to see portfolio for A-levels. We haven't done it before and we can accept students without portfolio. However, ideally they, they should have some GCSE um, background some 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 experience in how to do with sketchbooks and stuff some of them maybe not but they're so talented that they can manage but without talent without passion without experience that would be tough i'm not saying it's impossible but if if we have some portfolios uh, or some sketchbook pages uh, in advance even for a level applications then we can advise what what's the best subjects and i think i gave some advice to some of you uh, in the past, uh, what subjects uh, they could do. Some of you talking about that, uh, they ask, can they do three A levels? The answer is a big, big, big no, because um, I'm eight years in this college, only three students managed to complete three A level art subjects. And the, the last one I taught you is the, this year, Lottie, and she got three A stars, but she was sleeping literally here. She was working really, really hard. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's only three in eight years. So usually we advise two maximum, especially, for example, if you want to study architecture, you need to have an academic subject, ideally maths. UAL, by the way, they don't expect maths. They can accept any other academic subject for architecture, but um, you need you can go for architecture with three A levels. Art, sorry, three um, art subjects. So that's why we advise to have one academic, so it's more um, broad for the UCAS applications. Um, so Chris, the answer is keep sending portfolios if you want for even for A level applicants, and uh, we can advise what subject they could do there. Or I'm not sure if we can reject, but unless if it's something that I see a lot of problems and um, potential problems there. Got it. Thanks, Greg. Uh, anyone else? Any other questions you may have? Anything from the PowerPoint Hi. that you want any oh. clarifications? Hi, uh, could, I, could I ask a question about the UAL Foundation, please? Yes. So I have a student who would like to um, come and study the UAL Foundation. She's interested mainly in fashion. Um, her portfolio does show um, some test pieces. It does show some sketching. Um, could I ask firstly, the UAL Foundation, do most students coming onto it already have A-levels? Um, she, she would be sort of 17 years old, I think at the time of the start of the course uh, with an American diploma, just one art subject. Would she struggle and would the course content, could the course content be tailored to sort of a fashion um, outcome for, for, for her university applications, please? Um, I don't know if I have the answer to this one. Ideally, ideally, as I said before, if they have some background in GCC, obviously A level to go for foundation is even better. The reason is because we work in foundation, especially the three units that they have to create, is all based on a sketchbook. So some students are really good in painting on canvases, whatever, but when it comes to research on sketchbooks, and this is what we do in A-level, and that's what we're practicing, uh, they struggle a little bit. But I would not say that this specific student or any student, even if they don't have background in A-level, A -level creating sketchbooks, it doesn't mean that they can't do it. If they have the passion and the talent, they can learn that in the first kind of um, term, and they can learn how to work on that. Yes. It's one year, they have to do three units and the portfolio, it's a lot of work. But half of the students this year, for example, they didn't have A-levels and they made it. So, but they work really, really hard. We have one student that struggled a little bit. That's why she's going to apply in next November because obviously she missed a lot of lessons as well. She had some other problems. But uh, if you work really hard and you work, you know, as much as possible, then, uh, and you can get it. You can go fast, and you can you can make it. Doesn't it's not it's not the actual thing, the A level experience. 
if I see the portfolio, of course I could uh, advise. But again, as we said before, as James said before, I hope that student, your student, is not applying only to Fashion Central St. Martins because, as you as you heard that, there's 1,900 candidates and there's only 50 places. So these 50 places is for students that they've done GCSE, A level, they've done all their lives doing that. I guess so. It's a big competition with your student or anyone else, but they can still try. Nothing wrong with that. Um, Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else? James, any questions, James? No, Greg, I'm not, I'm not going to quiz you on this uh, on this particular occasion because uh, you, you're always so thorough and all encompassing in, in terms of everything. And although I will just ask a question at the end, it, it, we see in most areas um, of progression at the moment uh, that over the next couple of years, there's going to be sweeping changes or at least subtle changes in some sweeping in others are there any changes on the horizon for art school entry in the next sort of couple of years that you're aware of in advance or is it our, all business our, as usual our entries. you mean Sorry. for mpw no no uh in in terms of going on from mpw into the wider into oh. the wider university world um is, is that felt in the art world or is it only at the university level on the more academic subjects where the changes are planned i mean have, have you got any early sense as to whether there are changes in the next couple of years it might be the answer is no but um worthwhile um, again because especially we have this relationship with ul and actually sarah was here last week with the, for the show and uh, when when I talk to them, I, I get a lot of information and I a lot of knowledge lately, which I'm really happy with that. It doesn't look it doesn't seem like there will be any changes. The only problem and we have to that we all have to face and actually they I push Sarah a little bit to to confirm that is that UAL specifically, it gets really, really uh, competitive and um, and a lot of students, they want to uh, go for BA courses. So the, and what they try to do, and especially in a few years time, again, I don't want to talk on behalf of UL, but this is what they said as well. They try to push Second time it's happened now. James, can you hear me? Uh, I, I can, Greg. Uh, just at the pivotal moment, you uh, you, you paused. Okay. Uh, and, okay. and so, I, th I yes. thought it was a dramatic so I pause. Think, okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. So I think this is something that we have to um, think as well, because at the moment, all our B, uh, A level students, they have the chance to go from BA courses, which is amazing. Two years A level, and then you go from BA. Some, especially some of them that they can't do foundation because of their age, yeah. the visa, the requirements, etc. But um, I'm afraid this is something that students need to think as well, because maybe in a few years time, the competitive courses, and it gets worse and worse and worse on that, they may have to do foundation. So they need to allow on the visa, they need to allow one year foundation if they want to go there. Otherwise, they need to go and find some places that they're not, they're less competitive maybe. But um, mm. except that, that, I don't think there's going to be any change. Always good to know. It means we can be business as usual for the uh, for the foreseeable. Uh, two quick questions uh, uh, to, to close us out here. One from May here, which is, do you offer some working placements for A-level or foundation art students during their studies with MPW? Um, do you want to huh. just quickly answer that one? Um, you mean... Uh, or foundation art students during, mm. during their studies with MPW. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, we have the, the, we had students we had students in the past that they they do internships with some um, fashion you know houses and things because they you know they knew those and actually I can't say names because obviously it's confidential but they. I'm, I'm glad that they're coming back during summer usually and they say, uh, oh, during, you know, in the first year, we've done this internship in Fendi or Gucci or whatever, and they come back with a lot of work. So they have the chance to do that. 
but we don't usually, I mean, we don't find placement for them. We found courses for them. UL has a lot of summer courses as well that we strongly advise students to do. For It's good for their CV, uh, short, some short summer courses. But when it comes to working placement for relevant students, um, no. The foundation, obviously, they go straight from BAs. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add on to the end of that one and say it's a bit like medicine in a way in the fact yes. that we don't actively go and find the placements for you that is part of the integral learning uh, and experience of of a student applying to uh, to these places beyond mpw what we do is support you in helping find those in the fact that when the conversations from the outset with your with your DOS, with your teachers will be about what sort of things would you like to do? Suggestions can be made, even in some respects, a bit of ghostwriting can be done behind, but it has to be the student being proactive to go out and get the placements because otherwise the experience is largely superfluous within that. Um, Greg, one one quick one as well. Um, in terms of um, uh, architecture. Why why is it paired away from maths and physics? I know we need an academic requirement, but it used to be so rigorous that you have to have maths or physics, sometimes maths and physics, uh, and yet that has changed. Is there a good reason as to why that has changed, particularly at a time when UCL, for example, is now running a, uh, an engineering and design based course? It feels like they're combining these things together. So why have they removed the, the, the requirement? The answer is really simple, I think, James because our society moves on in more fast ways and easy, the easiest way to do things. Talking about the chat, I, uh, AI, how you call it, everything goes towards that. So I think it's because they realize that in few years time, everything is going to be software. I want this design, I press a button. So, and I want this calculation, I press a button. So the, 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 the software will make all this engineering and all these maths, they will make that because time is money apparently. It was like that, but it gets more and more and more. So I believe that's the only um, th thought I have. Um, and I know that because I was working closely with a student in Kingston. One of our students went for King to Kingston Architecture, and she told me that the first year in architecture, they don't allow you to use any software, nothing, 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 and everything has to be by hand, which is amazing. I don't think any other universities that do that, but then the second, third, uh, fourth, and fifth year is all about software. So in a way, they tell them, okay, you learn it in the first year, that's it. Forget about that. Now it's all software. And then I, I don't know exactly what software they use there or archi architects, but it's all about that. So I believe it wasn't like, as you said, in the past, it was all about maths because you had this responsibility to get the building right, the engineering, the structure, this and this and this. Now it's all about you put the facts there. I want a building to be five stories at all. I want the foundation to be that. And then they tell you the foundation pillars have to be one meter wide, this and that and that. So you don't have to do that. And I guess because of less need of that, that's why the university is done. However, half of them, at least, as far as I know, they, they expect you to have maths or sciences or something like that. UAL doesn't. Uh, Kingston, I think they don't. But um, I think all of them, they will stop soon because, again, for this reason. Thank you. It's always interesting to hear that insight, and that is fascinating. And I, I'll just he hesitate to uh, to say that what Greg is not saying is that architecture is getting easier. Um, uh, no, but uh, no, ultimately, um, ultimately, the requirement does change, and uh, and the rise of technology really is uh, aiding things like architecture. And that course at UCL, this design and engineering course, is testament to exactly how that particular sector mm. is moving, and and is definitely maybe not worth easier. A look. Maybe not easier, but faster for sure. It, it, it okay. makes, you know, things faster. Absolutely. Um, any any closing thoughts from you, Greg? Uh, not sure. I think I covered everything. I think I think you have. And so yeah. thank you as ever. You uh, you deliver these so ably, so well and uh, and with such uh, experience and enthusiasm. And it, uh, it it is always reflected from students how much uh, of, of a good experience they have when they come through uh, the art department, uh, your department, especially at MPW. So look, thank you for your time. Um, you. To, ladies and gentlemen, if you have more questions, do feel free to contact us offline here. Um, I, I, I thank Greg for 
for his time today. I thank the the student actors and staff who passed through to try and make it look like a busy art classroom during the course of the webinar itself happening in the backdrop. And, and generally speaking, thank you for your time over the last five weeks. It has been a pleasure to have you with us uh, on this particular uh, section of the year. Uh, I hope that there was enough interest for you throughout this time. Uh, if you have questions over the summer, do come to us. If there's anything else you'd like us to present on, let us know. But uh, in the meantime, I wish you the very best for the remainder of your academic years into the summer itself. Uh, and, uh, and thank you to all my colleagues who've been participants and on this course calls uh, for the past five weeks. Uh, all the very best and uh, we will see you uh, in what will be our golden anniversary uh, academic year kicking off in September 2023. Uh, in the meantime, your very good health. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Yeah.